Hello everyone and welcome to Larry the Garden Fairy coming to you live from Duluth, Minnesota Zone 4B. You know, I showed you some of the projects where I was moving things, digging up hostas. I had some other hostas to put in place, some beautiful grande amethyst hookahs. I bought some begonias, but you know, I've showed you so many of the planting videos that I think it's time to show you some of the pretty, okay? It's a lot of work, you guys, it really is. But this is why. I All right, you guys, so this is the nine bark. This used to be where the rhubarb was and it really did take up this whole area. But the nine bark's here against the fence. The nice red color adds just a beautiful pop there. These are the sum and substance hostas that uh, it just is a really nice contrast to the red leaves of the nine bark. But we have those there and then left the lambs here because you see this has this blue, like green blue. Blue is one of the four colors you should always try to put little pops of in your landscaping just to make it work. This was a hosta that just needed to be relocated and I thought this was a good spot. So after the sum and substance hostas, I have the golden amethyst or grande amethyst hookahs or corbels, whichever you prefer. I know what you mean. And then I ran, I ran short. I, I was hoping to have a fourth just to fill that in right up there, but I actually kind of like this better. Um, just think outside the box, you guys. When this happens, it happens. So the coleus here, if you look real close, has the deep purple amethyst right inside next to that bright red. And then the chartreuse green, is that not just, look at those together. I'm so proud of myself. I think it just looks fabulous. Got the hostas that were planted last year. They bring in a nice white, but then it just rolls up here into some more of the uh, lamb's tongue. Some of the, we just moved this as well. This is ladies mantle. This opens up into a really pretty yellow flower, very dainty. Then we move down to the lungwort. I think it's pulmonaria, I can't remember exactly, but it's, I call it lungwort. Some more hosta. These two here are both uh, the gomfrinas. This one's still in the pot. So I can tell you exactly which one I didn't know. It's a mix, <laughs> but it is a gomfrina. You guys, this will get about, to be about a three foot ball. So when you imagine these two here, they're going to get about this big, right out here. So that's gonna fill in a nice spot. Then back in here, you can see the caladiums popping up. There's some up in there. It's just gonna be beautiful. Some more lungs, lungwort that we had moved. Some alliums at the end of their days. <laughs> My favorite, Brunera, Brunera, whatever you like to call it. This one is the Sea Heart, but look at the beautiful little flowers on there. Absolutely gorgeous, you guys. Some hostas up in here. This area is going to fill in with the Caladium as well. The nice red center, light green, dark green on the edges. And then I just popped in some begonias here. We went out to Benny Birch Nursery just a few days ago just to see it. I'd never seen it. And we walked in and Gary said hi to Tom. He's the owner of the place. And uh, he's like, you're here on a perfect day. It was the day they started there. Every annual and every vegetable was $1. <laughs> I spent $38. <laughs> but I would have spent $100. $38 at regular price. So that is the way that I justify that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so this is a uh, from walking through. Let's give you the whole. There you go. So this is the archway that you take a walk through. We just got these pots. Half price at Cub. 
1150 a piece but the blue here is going to be nice with the blue on the arbor and the blue on the shaker's porch so from here it looks like this the Japanese maple is looking spectacular, guys. And then that's the way it looks when you take your walk down the lane. So back into this area, I finished the sidewalk here with the alyssum. These will get to be about an eight inch circle. So these will fill in this whole area here along with the Veronica's or Speedwell's. You see guys, they've they're getting to the end of their blossoms. This is when I'm going to come in and shear them back about about to there. I'm going to just take off all the blooms stems at the base. If we had a little bit grow longer growing season, a little uh, more heat, we would get a good second pop with them, but I'll get an okay one. But yeah, we've got some sun patients here that are looking like uh, they're getting a little more sun than they like. Have to keep an eye on that, might have to pop it out. But this is along the sidewalk here. This is the new rose bush that Gary popped in yesterday. Uh, one of the ones we got at Bending Birch. Beautiful, beautiful. And then this is the project. This is what I've been doing. Right here. I've been running the drip hosing. These are all the sunflowers. They run up along the house, runs across there. These are all the dahlias. I'm gonna do a video just on dahlias in the next few days, you guys, to give you an idea of why some of them look like this, some of them look like this, and some of them look like this. So, I'll give you an idea of why that happens. I mean, there's no really set reason. It could be a million things, but in my experiment, I'll tell you why it happened. But that's it in a nutshell. Wanted to take you guys around and let you see everything. And uh, I can't wait till it's in bloom. Can't wait till I'm on my bike selling flowers, selling bouquets. Um, when I get it going, you guys, I can't wait. I have a uniform all figured out, as I'm sure you would expect. <laughs> but when I start selling flowers down in Canal Park and in the city streets of Duluth, I sure hope to see you guys. Uh, this is Larry the Garden Fairy saying, please, please subscribe, please share, uh, and please like the video. Um, I, I, it would mean so much to me, you guys. Thank you again. I hope you're enjoying this process. Until later, love you guys. Bye.